What's up, people? My name is Dax. If you don't know me and this channel, basically, I'm a Christian currently studying the religion of Islam. And right now, we're in a series looking at prophecies in the Quran, asking, are there any impressive and genuine prophecies in the Quran that prove it is a miracle? If you don't know, Muslims will say that the Quran is the main miracle of Islam. That when Muhammad came, he brought the Quran. The Quran is a miracle, and so it demonstrates that Muhammad was a prophet. So there's a lot on the line here. All I'm asking is that I would expect there to be a clear prophecy in the Quran that we can actually test, that proves that it is a miracle, that proves it is divine. That's what this series is all about. So in this episode, we're looking at a prophecy from Surah 111, basically this prediction about a man named Abu Lahab that he will go to hell. That's the prophecy we're looking at. Does this prophecy prove the Quran is a miracle? Some Muslims think so. Uh, we're going to be responding to Muslim Lantern today. He's a popular Islamic YouTuber, and he's made some comments about this prophecy. And so, um, basically, he thinks that this prophecy proves the Quran is a miracle, which through this proves that Muhammad is a prophet. So, we'll look at some of his arguments. We'll respond to some of his arguments. With that being said, if you enjoy this video, please drop a like. Subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this, comparing and contrasting Christianity and Islam, the two largest religions in the the world. Here we go. So if you didn't see episode one, here's the criteria that we're using in this series. For a prophecy to be genuine and impressive, it must fit all five criteria. Number one, the prophecy must be clear and specific. Two, the prophecy must predate the fulfillment by a substantial amount of time. Number three, the event must not be a common occurrence or the, the fulfillment, the thing being predicted must not be a common occurrence. The fulfillment could not have been staged by those aware of the prophecy. And number five, the fulfillment must be clear and specific. So this has changed a little bit since the first episode, and it's probably going to change again, to be honest. In each episode, I'm trying to I'm trying to create a mate, just this beautiful, these are the five criteria or the four criteria that every prophecy can be judged against. And so along the way, I'm realizing that is a deficiency that's lacking. We need to word this differently. But as of right now, these are the five best criteria I could come up with. So does this prophecy meet all five criteria? If it fails just one, if it doesn't fit just one of these, then it's not a genuine prophecy and it should not be counted as evidence for the truth of Islam or for the truth of Christianity for that matter or another religion. It has to meet all of these criteria. So let's look at the, the, the prophecy. Let's look at the passage. So we'll read the passage and then we'll look at uh, Muslim Lantern's thoughts on, on what this is talking about. But Surah 111 verses 1 through 5. May the hands of Abu Lahab perish and may he perish. His wealth avails him not, nor what he has earned. He shall enter a blazing fire and his wife, carrier of firewood, upon her neck is a rope of palm fiber. So these five verses, that was the whole chapter in the Quran. That is the whole surah right there, these five verses, predicting that Abu Lahab will perish, that his wealth will avail him. And lastly, the prediction that we will talk about, that Abu Lahab will enter hell. It also says his wife will enter hell. That's the, and his wife, carrier of firewood, which is actually very clever, very funny to me, um, very illustrative. But he shall enter a blazing fire. That's the prediction that we're going to focus on in this video. Uh, something behind this, some background story, basically Abu Lahab was a rich uncle of Muhammad, but he was against Muhammad. He did not believe Muhammad was a prophet. He did not believe Islam is true. He was an enemy of Islam. And so in that tension, uh, there was actually this scene where it seems that Muhammad got these verses, that's the claim, and then he predicts that his uncle, who was against him, will enter hell will go into hellfire for all of eternity. So that's the prediction. If you don't believe me, here's a Muslim Lantern explaining this briefly as well. Check this out. There are prophecies at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, after him and today. Throughout, some prophecies at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, his uncle Abu Lahab, who was a furious enemy, who's telling to, is trying his best to stop the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Him and his wife. And the Prophet ﷺ was a verse revealed in the Quran. Abu Lahab, whenever he was, the Prophet he, whenever he went to speak about Islam, he would follow him and say, whatever this guy told you is true, is false. Don't listen to him. If he told you the sky is blue, is green. Don't listen to him. 
So that person, Allah revealed the Quran saying, تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصل نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جديا حبل من مسط. So there you have it. This surah is clearly predicting that Abu Lahab will enter hell. That's the claim. That's the prediction. That's the thing we're uh, we're trying to test. Okay. For now. Uh, before we look at Muslim Lantern's main argument, let me just say right off the bat, from the first moment I read it, this was the question that I had, and this is the question that I will pose to you guys. How do you know that Abu Lahab is in hell? How do you know that he entered hell? How could we possibly, how could anyone possibly know this? Now, I, I'm not sure if some Muslims think that he might go to hell eventually, like at Judgment Day. Maybe that hasn't happened yet. If that's the case, then this prophecy isn't testable, and there's no point in even talking about it. But I assume, since Muslims talk about this, I assume that you guys believe he is currently in hell, like right now. He entered hell. So, my question is simply, how do you know Abu Lahab entered hell? On a very real level, I mean, is there a window into hell that we can look through and see him in hell? Is there some security camera footage that we can review and see him walking, entering into hellfire? Like, I want to know, how could we know that he is in hell? Now, when I say that, I'm not trying to be overly skeptical. I know sometimes when you talk with an atheist, they ask for some impossible level of evidence that is just unnecessary. I'm not trying to do that. I think this is a good question. How do you know? How can you prove that Abu Lahab is in hell? hell. Basically, I'm bringing up the fifth criteria. The fulfillment must be clear and specific. So I'm asking, how do we know, how is it clear that he entered hell? How could anyone actually know that? Now, you're probably thinking, if you're a Muslim, you're like, oh, well, no problem. Obvious. You're probably going down to the comment section already. Um, from a Muslim standpoint, you might say, oh, well, easy. I know he went to hell, because he never became a Muslim. You might have some type of logic like that. Um, but there's a logical fallacy there. You can't just assume that non-Muslims go to hell because you'd be assuming the thing that you're trying to prove. You're already assuming that Islam is true. To put it another way, in order to, in order to say that you know Abu Lahab is in hell because he never accepted Islam, you have to first assume that Islam is true. But if you're using this prophecy to prove the truth of Islam, you can't already first assume what you're trying to prove. This is known as circular reasoning, okay? You're assuming the thing that you're trying to prove. If you say, oh, I know he went to hell, why? Or if you're saying, this prophecy proves that Islam is true because it predicted he will go to hell. How do you know he went to hell? Because Islam is true. That's arguing in a circle. You, you can't do that. You have to provide actual positive evidence for, for how you know he is in hell without first assuming that Islam is true. Not to mention, I don't believe Islam is true, so that evidence means nothing to me. That argument, even though it's fallacious, on top of that, it still means nothing to me. I don't believe Islam is true. That's what I'm trying to figure out. You can't just assume that in order to conclude this. So, again, how do you know Abu Lahab entered hell? And not just any hell, right? Maybe, maybe he is in hell. But maybe it's the Christian hell. Maybe it's the Jewish hell. Maybe it's Hindu hell for all we know. How do you know specifically that it's Islamic hell? Prove to me, give us actual evidence that Abu Lahab is in hell and that that hell is the Islamic hell. That's my question for you. Okay. So let's go back to Muslim Lantern. To be fair, he does give some type of argument for this. So check this out. Allah Azza wa revealed these verses saying that his end will be hellfire. Now, he could have disproved Islam by coming to the Prophet وسلم, and saying, I've become Muslim. I've become a Muslim. That's it. And claims disproved now. How can this be a revelation? He said he's going to die on disbelief and enter hellfire. He just accepted Islam. You're making a claim, and this is opposite to the claim that you made. The people with their apparent. If he said something, apparently there was munafiqun, hypocrites at the time of the Prophet they were not believing in, inwardly, but they believe they were believing outwardly. So if he was a munafiq, that also disproves the message because the Prophet taught us we have to take the apparent of the people. So just him by him claiming it would be enough to show that this message is not true. But he couldn't do it because the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth is the one who said he will lie upon this belief. All in all, Abu Lahab 
could have disproven this prophecy by becoming a Muslim. He didn't become a Muslim because he couldn't because Allah had decreed that he was going to hell. So Muslim Lantern's argument is something like this. This is his logic. Number one, premise one, Abu Lahab becoming a Muslim would have disproven this prediction. Number two, Abu Lahab did not become a Muslim, so therefore his conclusion is that the prophecy about him going to hell is a miracle. This is the logic that he lays out in his, in his discourse as he's talking about this. So, is this valid? Um, no, to say the least, there's a couple logical problems here, and this brings up some more questions for me. But first of all, notice the passage does not say Abu Lahab will never become a Muslim. It just says he will enter hell. This is important, okay? We have to be precise when we're studying things, when we're trying to be sincere, when we're talking about truth, we have to be precise. It does not say he, he will never become a Muslim. Muslim Lantern and other Muslims might assume this again because they're, they're arguing in a circle. They assume that being a non-Muslim is the same as going to hell, but that's not in the text. We have to be precise. It just says he will enter hell. That's also important because when I ask Muslims if they're going to paradise or not, they say, Inshallah. Inshallah, which means God willing. They'll say, God willing, I hope that I get to go to heaven. That's essentially their belief. So in Islam, there is no assurance of salvation. Just because you're a Muslim, that doesn't mean you know that you're going to paradise. You could call yourself a Muslim, but still be going to hell. Maybe because you didn't do enough good works. Why am I bringing this up? Because this means even if Abu Lahab did become a Muslim, that wouldn't mean that he's not going to hell. Him becoming a Muslim would not have disproven the prediction that he would enter hell. Which means this prophecy actually is not testable. Or, or by him, he could not have disproven it at all. This means Muslim Lantern's first premise is simply wrong. The prediction was not that Abu Lahab would never become a Muslim. The prediction was actually that he would enter hell, which Abu Lahab had no way of disproving because even if he became a Muslim, that still would not mean that he wouldn't enter Islam. Not to mention that there are some verses that seem to indicate that everyone goes to hell, even Muslims, that they enter it and then like walk through it on the way to paradise or something like that. That's another controversial point I'm going to say for another video. But, okay, so the second problem with Muslim Lantern's argument is that it is a non sequitur, which means the conclusion does not logically follow from the premises. Let's pretend, for sake of argument, that his first two premises are true. Let's grant him the premises and ask, do they lead to the conclusion? Here's an analogy, okay? So I love American football. I don't know why we call it football when you mainly use your hands. Americans are silly and they make no sense a lot of the times, most of the time, so I don't know. But I love American football. My favorite team is called the Steelers, and their rival, their enemies, are called the Ravens. So I love the Steelers, but I hate the Ravens, okay? Now imagine a Ravens fan comes up to me and says, Dax, I predict that you will never become a Ravens fan. Okay, first of all, that wouldn't be a very impressive prediction. Obviously, I'm not going to become a Ravens fan because I hate the Ravens. That's not like what? That's just a weird thing to say. But now let's say, let's say I live my life, I die, I never became a Ravens fan. Now imagine that that Ravens fan who is still alive, let's pretend that he says, you know what? I predicted that Dax would never become a Ravens fan and he never did. Even though he could have disproven that claim, he could have disproven that prediction by becoming a Ravens fan. He didn't, which means that my prophecy, my prediction was a miracle and I am a prophet. Do you see the problem with that? If you're not seeing it, here it is, okay? Just because I didn't become a Ravens fan in no way means that this man's prophecy was all of a sudden a miracle. In the same way, Abu Lahab not becoming a Muslim to disprove Muhammad's prediction in no way demonstrates the prophecy is a miracle. Abu Lahab's silence here can't be counted as positive evidence for the miraculous nature of this prophecy. That logical jump makes no sense. That, that's, a, that's a non sequitur. This is some type of argument from silence, which is a fallacy. It, it doesn't make sense. 
this logic from Muslim Lantern, he, he's making this jump that just isn't warranted. Even if his premises are true, they don't lead to the conclusion that his prophecy is a miracle. So uh, that's my analysis of this clip that I found from Muslim Lantern of this, of this video. It's definitely a part of a longer video. I'll post it down below. You should check it out for yourself. I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you the timestamps to go check it out. Uh, if you think I'm misrepresenting his argument, then let me know. I'm not trying to. I, I listened to this clip like 30 times and I am, this is what he's saying and his logic doesn't make sense. So if you think there's something I'm missing or if you think there's other arguments that actually establish that Abu Lahab went to hell and you know that or if you do think he could have disproven it, comment down below. I'm all ears. I want to hear you guys' thoughts and uh, those are some of mine. So here's my quick summary all in all. This prophecy fails the fifth criteria. I also think it fails some of the others, but I'll save that for another time. For now, I think it fails the fifth criteria. This fulfillment isn't testable. There's no way we could possibly know that he is in hell. How could we actually prove that? How can we actually test that? If we're being honest, it seems that Muhammad was just mad at his uncle, and in that anger, he declared that his uncle would go to hell. This just seems like some family drama. This just seems like a very human prediction that stemmed from this conflict that he had with his uncle. That's all it seems. There's nothing impressive about this. There's nothing that there's nothing in here that would establish that the Quran is a miracle and that validates the prophethood of Muhammad. So thank you guys so much for watching. What this means is that this journey must continue. We must continue analyzing prophecies in the Quran. In the next video, I'm going to look at Surah 30, the Roman prophecy, which is very popular. A lot of you commented on my last video that I should analyze that one. So that's coming up next. Make sure to check that out probably next month. Stay tuned for that. And besides that, thank you guys for hanging out. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to this channel if you want more content talking about Christianity and Islam. I appreciate you, I, 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 I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.